Spencer, what was it like to get your first taste of you know Power Five football at this level? Um, obviously not Power Five opponent, but you know, yeah. first time in Carolina Blue. Um, it, it was nice to be in Kenyon Stadium with all the fans and cheering. Um, it's an atmosphere that I haven't really experienced too much before, and so to have that experience under my belt for the first time was really nice to have. Um, but other than that, it's a game of football, so once kind of I like, got used to that, I was able to lock in and kind of get ready to go. Yeah, review and tape, anything you, that stuck out that you improve on, that you think you did well, that definitely needs adjustments heading to, into uh, App State? Yeah, there's some uh, footwork stuff that I thought I needed to work on more blocking things, and um, there's a few plays at the start of the game that I think I could definitely improve on. But I think those things throughout the game fixed themselves and adjusted them pretty well. Go back to the atmosphere. Was there, when, once the game started, did you block all that out? Or were there a couple moments you just kind of looked around and said, this isn't the Ivy League? Oh, I mean, for sure. You know, you have to take those moments and, you know, really appreciate where you are. And, but um, for me, that's when, once the ball's in play and the game's going, I get pretty locked into what's happening. Um, try to ignore everything that's kind of around me. What are your thoughts on App State's defense from what you've seen so far? Uh, their defense, I think, has a solid core. I think they're going to be a, a great competition for us, you know, coming out of uh, Florida A&M. Um, they're a solid team, and I think we're just going to Keep on progressing to play better defenses, and I think App State is going to be a good challenge for us. There's a lot of new parts in the offensive line. How was the communication for you guys up front, and was it something that you sense got better as the game went on? Oh, for sure. It's it's always one of those things. Having um, played with multiple offensive line, you know, each game, each season, it's always a progression of communication. How um, you work with your guard if you're a tackle a guard how you work with your center and your guard, that communication part. And I definitely think um, throughout the, the game, it definitely improved. And um, we're getting used to playing with each other, how to communicate with one another, and um, how to make sure that we're blocking and scheming up the right, the right play. Spencer, App is you know, the program that was in the FCS for a long time, made the jump to FBS, and has had a lot of success quickly here. Like, just you know, I understand where you were at Harvard, yeah. but did you notice their program just from afar and just, you know, what they've been able to do? I mean, is that, are they a team you take taken notice of just as a college football guy? Um, to be honest, I'm not much into looking at other <laughs> programs, um, especially at Harvard. I think they transitioned over to FBS before I even got to Harvard, so um, I haven't had too much notice both App State and any of those other guys that have made that type of transition before. So this will be an all-in thing then? Yeah. Saturday, yes, it will, up there. It will be. Yeah, so I got introduced to App State when I came down here in North Carolina this, this summer, so I'm pretty unfamiliar um, with them. What's it been like living in North Carolina and trying to help culturally coming down from where you grew up and up in outside Boston? Yeah, for sure. It's, uh, it's definitely a shift. Um, especially coming from Boston, you know, big city, the hustle and bustle, coming down to North Carolina. It's a lot a little slower kind of tempo and more relaxed and things are more spread out. And, um, that's definitely been an adjustment because I'm used to hopping on the train, taking like 15 minutes to get downtown and, you know, having convenience stores on every yeah. single corner. Um, but I've, I've enjoyed kind of the atmosphere here and um, having the students back on campus has, has been awesome as well. During the summer, it was pretty quiet. So I've, I've enjoyed having you know everybody here. And just having that kind of hustle and bustle back in my life. Any, any food, strange foods, or any foods you really like down here that stood out to you? Um, not anything that really comes to mind. I've, I've had a lot of the food before, like grits. I you know that's a common breakfast food down here. But nothing that's really, really stood out. I know there's some good barbecue, and I guess biscuits and gravy, and like biscuits and chicken, kind of 
other sandwiches, having those more frequently I, I, I've enjoyed because those are definitely great breakfast sandwiches. Does the slower aspect of things here as compared to Boston, does it remind you of home at all? Is it, are there any similarities there? Um, I had, so growing up in Minnesota, I, I lived in the suburbs, um, so I would, I would say it's, it's very similar in that sense, but um, I think if I were kind of to rank things, I would definitely say like Boston, Minnesota, and then North Carolina, so I think um, in terms of the, the hustle of, of things going on, um, being out here in Chapel Hill, obviously we have Durham and Raleigh close by, but it's still far enough away that I feel like it's still very isolated. And you know, it's we're kind of in our own world. So um, I've really enjoyed uh, that aspect of things. It's kind of been nice to really tune out everything else and just really focus on what's going on on the football team, what's going on on, um, on campus, and kind of here at Chapel Hill. Going back to game attitudes, <coughs> what was it like playing in the game? Like, does yeah. that yeah. translate into any for sure? So the thing with the game at Harvard, the Harvard versus Yale game. Um, it's always the last game of the season, and so there's a lot of anticipation for that game because that game usually has a critical out outcome of who's going to win the Ivy League. Um, because us and Yale are usually one of the top few teams that are competing for that championship because in Ivy League, it's whoever has the best record wins the Ivy League championship. And so, that game in itself is always a major game for us two teams, but to add on top of that, for the students as well, it's a, it's a huge game, but it doesn't really get to that point until like second half, because most, most students are out tailgating prior to that and don't really make it to the stadium until halftime to see the end of the game. So um, to have this, the crowd and the atmosphere for the full game, um, was definitely a new experience and an uh, experience that um, I really enjoyed. Was it a headache getting your business school classes ironed out? Because I think Mac was telling us earlier in camp, like you're having to miss a few practices here and there because of the, the course load. Like, yeah. I, I mean, was that a problem to get sorted out? I mean, with with everything, once you, you know you miss a few practices or you miss a few classes, you know. You feel like you're falling behind. Right. There's always, you know, those opportunities to catch up and kind of get your feedback underneath you. And um, I think I worked pretty well with the football team as well as um, academics over and at Keenan Flagler, and we're able to figure out a schedule that works both with football and um, school. And I think since we've made those adjustments, and I've had a different uh, shift in scheduling, just because it's now we're in our core classes. Um, it's been really nice. I haven't been able to miss practice at all. And just having that consistency with anything, you kind of start to recognize those faults that you've had and able to make those changes in your game a lot quicker than when you say you miss one or two practices a week like I had to do um, during preseason. How much more time? Like it's it's going to be a problem. Yeah. Did you have to flex your football muscles on that? Like, look, no, you <laughs> It was just more communication and um, understanding with the professors and just um, kind of making some compromises with them, um, both over in King Flagler as well as uh, um, here on the football field. How much more time do you spend on football here as opposed to Harvard? I definitely spend a lot more time um, here, kind of looking at film, um, being ready and, and that aspect of things. Um, but I think my time management in both areas are pretty comparable between both academics and football. Um, I wouldn't say it's a huge adjustment. I'd just say it's probably more so like an hour or two more um, each week um, that I'm focusing more on like the film aspects of things. Football is football, but how much how much did you have, have to prove to yourself like when you got here in terms of you know earning a starting spot and For sure. just kind of whatever doubts or apprehensions you may have had to conquer in your own mind? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the, the start, the first few weeks, when we actually started fall camp, I had to first kind of understand the speed and the tempo of the game that I was now putting myself into. And realizing that tempo, um, I definitely was playing at a lower tempo to, to start. And I, I knew coming into that that I could definitely play at that level, just making Sure, kind of creating that mindset in myself that 
I can play at that tempo, I just need to um, come out and play. Um, but once I, that transition shifted for me, I think I've been able to compete pretty well, um, both at practice and on the game field. And uh, Obviously, I'm not perfect. I'm still trying to improve, still trying to adjust. And um, There's still mistakes I'm making, but each day, I feel like in each week, um, I'm getting better than the previous. What kind of quarterback do you think you have in Drake May? I know it's been one game, but yeah. uh, what, you know, you're a guy that's been around a while, seen some football. Like, what do you think? Where do you think he's headed as a quarterback? I think what's great about Drake May is he puts in the preparation uh, each each day with film, each day with practice. Um, he comes prepared on Saturday, and I think that's one of those things that you want to see in a quarterback. Um, that alone is really important, but to add on top of that, he has great character, great talent, uh, he's a great leader, and I think as he gets more starts under his belt, um, he's definitely going to gain that more confidence, not saying that he doesn't have any right now, um, but he has been a great leader for our offense and coming in, you know, he's got big shoes to fill, but I don't think he's worried about that. He's just worried about playing his game and putting our offense in the best uh, spot where he can distribute the ball, um, hand it off to our running backs, skip to our wide receivers, and just do his part to make sure our offense is successful. And I think um, that aspect of this game is really crucial to our success as an offense, and I think that's going to carry him a, a long way. Did you have to convince anyone in your family, like, about this extra year of football? Did anyone say, I mean, I don't know, or a friend, or anyone say, like, look, you want to do what now? Like, you know, like, what is, yeah. what was that whole process like, saying, like, I think this is what I want to do? Like, I've, I've always been um, very supportive in the decisions I've made through both my family, my friends, even my coaches back at Harvard. Um, they understood the opportunity that was at stake, and uh, I had given my four years to Harvard football, and the, uh, I talked with Coach Murphy, the head coach, and he uh, understood, you know, I, I was looking to uh, play at a, a, another level to kind of uh, keep growing my game, and so I, throughout this whole decision process, I've got nothing but support, which has been amazing. Awesome. You guys good? Hey man, appreciate it. Awesome. Thank, Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Appreciate it.